Hello and welcome to Security Management 201. I'm Professor Wool and today we'll be talking about how to simplify and enforce network segmentation and security zoning. So what are we talking about? In your typical organization uh, you have multiple firewalls. Here we have an example of a rather simple organization with four firewalls, one facing the internet, one protecting the web servers area, one uh, protecting the main internal network and uh, one protecting the PCI zone where servers that carry credit card information are located. And all these firewalls have their policies in them, maybe thousands of rules allowing traffic uh, that is supposed to be allowed and denying the rest. And it becomes difficult to manage all of these firewall policies over time because policies grow. And remember, these policies evolve over time. Every so often, a new service is being rolled out and uh, traffic needs to be allowed from uh, the various endpoints that uh, this new application requires. And each of these change requests has to be approved by the security team. They have to look into the change request and evaluate whether the requested traffic poses a risk to the organization or not. How can you simplify thinking about such a, a change request? Well, what people have found is that it's convenient to organize the way you think about your network into security zones. So you can uh, lump together groups of servers that are in various areas, various segments of your network, um, and give them a, a security zoning label. So you'd have your inside network and your web servers network and your PCI network. And then once you have these different zones um, organized, you can write a high-level security policy in matrix form, something like this, where you have uh, all the zones, all the security zones uh, on the from and all the security zones on the to, on the columns. And each cell of this matrix basically is supposed to indicate what types of traffic should be allowed by default between a particular zone to another one. For instance, from the outside, so from your internet, you don't want to allow any kind of traffic to anywhere in the organization except into the web servers area, to the DMZ area, and there are a, a list of, there's a list of uh, uh, services that you will typically would allow, and the rest you would not allow. So you could list in that cell that you're allowing HTTPS, HTTP, and uh, whatever else is uh, considered benign and you want to allow it in that direction. Conversely, uh, for the PCI zone, you only want to allow traffic into the PCI zone just from the inside network from nowhere else. So you have these red X's everywhere else. And in the cell for traffic from the inside to the PCI, you would list the, uh, uh, the secure services that you want to allow by default. And how do you use such a matrix? Well, one way of using it is when a new change request uh, is being handled by the, net, by the system or by the, the network team. They just need to know where the traffic is coming from, so which zone the traffic would be coming from, which zone the traffic would be going to, and then you look up in the matrix and see whether the protocols and services that are being requested are, are, are allowed by the high-level policy. If they are, if they're in the uh, uh, zoning matrix, then you can automatically approve and you could even have uh, the approval process completely mechanized and have a software system uh, automatically approve it without a human in the loop. If the default security zoning matrix does not include the particular server in the traffic direction that is being requested, then that's an exception and the person has to look at that uh, protocol and make sure that it doesn't pose any kind of risk to the organization and it's uh, not violating any kind of compliance requirement. So having such a high-level policy in matrix form is something that makes your um, ability to manage the change requests and the security postures of the various firewalls much simpler. Another way of using the matrix is actually taking what is in it and comparing it to the actual rules implemented by each and every one of the firewalls to see whether they are allowing what's in the matrix and denying what's not. And there are software systems that can help you in doing all of those tasks. So to summarize, what we've seen today is um, in order to simplify 
your network segmentation and security zoning, what you really should do is define your security zones, write down your, your high-level security policy in zone-to-zone -zone matrix format, and then consider automated tools that help you enforce that matrix to the actual rules in the policies on the firewalls. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.